Hi guys, it's me again. Um, my voice is still ruined, but this makes it great because it feels a bit like ASMR, um, ASMR console repairs or something like that. Um, so we have, I've been, well, we as in I have taken out the motherboard of the Game Gear. One thing to be careful of is that the screen is still attached to the Game Gear, but it doesn't have like a connector. It looks like it's actually soldered directly onto the board. So you want to make sure that you don't accidentally um, damage that um, when you're taking it out or when you're working with it. Um, but let's have a look. Um, I'm doing a really close inspection. I'm actually going to pick this up really um, and show you. But basically, if I kind of try and zoom in, that's one of the capacitors and it's really kind of like worn out on the connector like on the actual bit where it solders onto the board what it should look like if i find you something a bit nicer is it should look relatively shiny like that and, and relatively flat and flush kind of like that connector that says fl there it should kind of look like that um but it just looks really, really dusty and like scratchy. And that generally isn't just from age. That usually happens if it's leaked or something. Um, and we've got the same on quite a few of the other ones like this one here, C54, um, which is that big one that says R47. Um, these ones just kind of look old. It just looks like overall it might need a bit of a clean and a bit of a nice little um, replacement. Um, so once I replace them with the new ones, it should then start to look a bit better. Um, now, of course, the new ones I have aren't going to be square in shape because I don't have square ones. Um, the difficulty is going to be getting them off, though, because it looks like they're kind of glued to the bottom. They're actually glued down. So they've been laid down and then glued onto the motherboard. Um, so I'm going to have a little bit of an investigation just to try and see the ways that I can try and get it off. Okay, well, some of these, there we go. So some of these seem to lift up. Um, so basically I've, I've been, I'm really going to be gentle with them though, because I don't want to break anything, but it does look like if I'm relatively gentle, I can tilt them up because if I break anything off by accident, then what can happen is that I can then like actually rip the pads off of the board. There you go. So it looks like that's all of them up. So I'm going to be replacing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Um, now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab my iPad because I want to draw these out and just um, remember which side is negative and which side is positive. Because if I don't put it the right way around when I put them back, I could break something. So let's not do that. There we go. Brilliant. So let's do a bit of a sketch. I'm actually going to screen record my sketch for you so that you guys can see what I'm doing. Um, so I'm just going to draw out a really bad version of the board. So that's the volume wheel. Then it kind of goes down, across and up. And then it goes like that. We have what looks like to be a light tube here. Um, then we have um, some tiny little components, another component here, um, and then we have a ceramic um, capacitor, and then we have two electrolytic ones, which are the ones I'm removing, and there's one, ah, there's two, there's one I missed out and I didn't lift up, so I'm going to do that in a bit, and that is minus and plus, and plus and minus, right. At least now I know I have a reference that I can go back to. So if I forget which way is plus and which way is minus, 
I can always go there and see what's happening. Now I need to get these components off first, which is going to be a bit of a tricky situation because I'm going to need to desolder it. It gets harder to desolder, of course, the worse condition the pads are in. So with that one that was dusty that we looked at at the start together, that one's going to be the hardest to desolder, um, at least properly without breaking anything because it might actually have rotted down to like the pad that it's sitting on. And if that's the case and I can't get the pad clean, then it's going to be a very difficult situation. But basically what I'm doing is I'm using my desoldering braid to hopefully get rid of all the old solder like that. And I'm just going to use it almost just to like scrape clean the pad. So now I have a clean pad, um, which is good. Um, now I'm just going to get rid of the other one that's using this, the, the other capacitor that's exactly the same. This is where having this tool is really invaluable when you're doing this repair. Um, the tool of desoldering braid, because especially when you match it up with having a flux pen to kind of help everything flow, it means that you can remove it correctly and it just minimizes the need for you to have to redo anything or have to like end up making more work for yourself, like scratching anything. Um, I could cut the legs off. I'd much rather use that as like a final attempt of doing anything. So that's all of that off. Um, now what I'm gonna do real quick, cause it is on the main board, is I'm gonna give it a bit of a clean with some alcohol and a brush. There we go. Brilliant. And that should at least prepare ourselves a bit better for when we need to fit these. So the longer lead is positive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the shorter lead. I'm going to put that down first. And we're going to use the pliers to bend them. Um, so then that way it actually grabs, it, it almost makes like a little foot for it to sit on. There we go, so that's one leg on, and then I'm going to solder the other leg in. Then I can cut it, and then I can put the more solder on the first leg. There we go. All right, and that's a new capacitor put on, so now i just got to cut the leg off. There we go, sweet, perfect. Then I can bend it down. Brilliant. And now, of course, as I said, the capacitors that I'm using aren't going to be the same looking ones. They're not going to be square like these. I'm not sure whether you can get square ones like these, um, but I am just going to basically do what I've done right now, which is bend them back to make the leg. And then I can solder it down and then fold it so that they fold in the same way. Uh, mainly so in that way there's enough space once everything closes. Nice. So we now have two capacitors replaced, which is good. Now we're going to get onto the rest of them. Yep, you're still recording, which is good. <laughs> Did you see that? That was brilliant. 
get pinged off into oblivion. That is that is absolutely something that I I can't wait to leave in the video to edit when I'm editing it. That was insane. That was such a that was a decent distance. That's why you wear um that's why you wear safety goggles. So I've just replaced all of the capacitors. Um some of them on the board um I'll actually yet yeah, again pick up the secondary camera to show you um, but this is what they look like so the most important thing that I would kind of give other than making the feet by like bending them with pliers is to like bend them back so that they sit in the same way that they did before I'm just gonna really quickly clean the screen there we go that's about as nice as I care to get it. To give you an idea of what I expect to happen while I'm putting all of these back, um, what I expect to happen is that even if the screen is broken, like as in cracked or something like that, that at very least I'm able to see a game on it or at least part of a game on it. Because even with broken screens, you're usually able to see some bit of it. Um, but I am hoping that through all of these things that we've done, so replacing the capacitors on the audio board, replacing the capacitors on the power board, and then replacing the capacitors on this, the main board, I'm hoping that all of those together have made it that we have a Game Gear that is able to function as it should. Whether that's perfect or not, I'm not sure, but we'll see. So let's put in Super Monaco GP. So firstly, I'm getting sound, which is good. But secondly, in case you can't see it, I'm going to show you on here. I'm getting screen. Now I'm very happy with that because this is the first time I've had something that's broken that I've just fixed. What's good is that now if I decide that I want to mod a Game Gear, I don't need to get another Game Gear. I already have one that works perfectly well. So there you go. Ooh, that fell. I'm going to find that later. Um, what was I saying? Yeah. Is it worth it to do it? Um, well, maybe if you have um, a game gear or a set of game gears that you can get relatively cheaply um, that have simple issues like this and you have the capacitors lying about or maybe if you were thinking of getting I don't know a couple of them or three or four of them and then repairing those and selling them and flipping them yeah maybe generally it is worth it um, other than that I think I just did it mainly because it was a nice fun little project um, maybe if any of you guys have a Game Gear that's broken, I still have some spare bits and pieces. Um, feel free to let me know in the comments um, what you need. That was a burp yet again because I'm ill. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for watching um, and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.